I recommend that book to you, The Book of Forgiving, and also another book by a different author called Forgive and Get Your Life Back. Both of these books are helpful, and I recommend them because I know that many of us have misguided ideas about forgiving. We think that if we forgive, we are saying that what happened was okay. We think that if we forgive, that the person who did something bad is okay. That it really didn't matter. It didn't hurt us or cause any problems. No, 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 no. All of those ideas are wrong. Forgiving is about healing ourselves. First and foremost, forgiving is about letting go of the hurt and pain and being at peace. Forgiving is about not being fed by the anger we feel towards the other person or towards an event. The other person may not even know they have hurt us. The event, an accident, for example, is inanimate and has no knowledge of our feelings. When we stay angry at the other person, that anger and that person or event are in control of our lives. So, it is said, to not forgive is like taking poison and expecting the other person to get sick. When we forgive, we acknowledge that what happened was wrong and hurtful. We acknowledge that the one or ones who did it should not have done it and may deserve punishment. When we forgive, we are letting go of that hurt and anger and finding peace. We may not have the opportunity to talk with the one who hurt us, but that doesn't matter. We heal and come to peace and move on. And to remember Jesus' advice to Peter, it may take 77 times or 490 times for us to be able to let go. Little by little, until we are healed. There will always be triggers that bring back those hurt feelings, but we can learn to let go, and finally, those hurt feelings are gone. So that's what forgiving means to me. Being at peace and letting go of pain and hurt caused by another, or caused by myself. And it's usually harder to forgive ourselves, I know it is for me, than to forgive others. But what if we want to keep the relationship with the one who hurt us? What if we want to have that conversation with them and work through that poor old path? Then we move to that final step, reconciliation, and restoration. And I will tell you that my cousin and I disagree on the technicalities of this, but I forgive. Reconciliation is even harder work than coming to peace and forgiveness in ourselves. To be reconciled, we must first face and confront the one who hurt us, or the one we hurt and come to understanding that allows us to move on. We may move on together with a friendship restored, or we may move apart, and as the two two say, we release the friendship. Forgiveness is always possible, because we are in control of our feelings, and we can bring those feelings Reconciliation is not always possible because the one 
who have hurt us may not want to resolve the issue. They may not think there's anything wrong to resolve. And if the hurt happened a long time ago, the person we need to deal with may not be available. Reconciliation is a wonderful gift because it restores the peace of God's kingdom. But the first step always is to come to a place of forgiveness for ourselves so that we restore God's peace in us. As we sang in our song this morning, He has not always dealt with us according to our sins, thank you God, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. As far as the east is from the west, so has God removed our sins from us. I have occasionally invited you to respond with a more hearty amen after our absolution and confession, because at that point we are totally reconciled with God, and so that we are in a place of peace and restoration. So let's hear what happens today after the confession. Forgiving 77 times? Yeah. 77 times? 70 times 7? 409 times? 50,000 times? Yes, if we need to. But the one time that brings healing and peace to each one of us, that's the way.